What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the correct way to pay off debt. So if you're watching this video, it's more than likely that you obviously have debt. And that is the case for the majority of us because we were all taught to use our credit cards and most of us were taught to use them incorrectly. As I previously stated in the last video where I told you guys never to use debit cards again and start using your credit cards, I did tell you guys that you guys have to start using them after you guys pay off your debt. And that's what I'm going to be showing you guys today in three simple steps. First off, by finding out what you owe. The second one being finding out what you can spend and the third one being is by paying it off and I'm going to be getting in depth on how to do each of these three things throughout this video so make sure you watch the entire thing because initially I'm going to be showing you guys examples on how I've done it in the past to get where I am today and how I'm currently dealing with my debt situations and why I still have debt. So the first step to paying off your debt correctly is to find out what you owe. Obviously to pay off your debt you have to know how much you owe. There's two ways you can go about this. You can either just go through all your tracking expenses if you do this already and find out what you owe, maybe go through all your accounts and see if there's any debt. Or you can go the easier route, which you can just go to a simple website and it'll tell you everything you owe, and that is by using Credit Karma. This video is not sponsored by them at all, nor am I doing this as a shout out to them. It's just the easiest way that I figured it out, and it literally lists it all out for you. It tells you the total amount that you owe, and it tells you how much you owe in every single category, and this is honestly the easiest way because it's all right there for you. So once you've figured out these balances, you wanna go ahead and list them from the lowest balance to the highest balance. So I'm gonna show you guys an example of the debt I had back before I even knew any of this. And I'm gonna be showing you guys throughout this video the steps I used to pay this debt off. So the first one was pretty simple, the one most of us have, which is a credit card. And that one I had around a $300 balance. All these are gonna be approximate, by the way, guys. The second one was a Best Buy credit card, which ended up equaling about $1,000. And obviously the next one is the one that a lot of us have as well, which is a car payment, and mine was $1,500 at this moment. And the last one which I had was my student loan, which equals out to $7,500. So now moving on to step number two, which is finding out how much you can spend. In order to find out how much you can spend, you need to figure out how much money you make and how much of that you can use to pay off debt because you obviously can't just pay your necessities and then use the rest towards debt. It's best to categorize your money into certain categories. That way, you know you can spend this much here and this much there, and then you have this much left over to pay off debt. And I did actually make a video on this, which I will leave in the description down below as well as plug it up in this corner right here. That way you guys can go back to that video and figure out how to exactly budget your money and see how much money you'd have left over to spend on your debt. And for the third step, I'm gonna need to know how much money I have left over to pay off these debts. So for that example, I'm gonna approximate it to where I'm left over with like $1,000 to pay off this debt. And last but not least, moving on to step number three, you figured out how much you owe, you figured out how much you can spend, and now obviously comes a step to actually paying it off. So the reason the first step was to list off your debt from smallest balance to the highest balance is because this is going to be the way you're gonna be paying off your debt. If we do this logically, you're not gonna have $7,500 just laying around to pay off your student loan. Well, in this case, it was my student loan. But some people have more, some people have less. I've only taken out a loan three times, and I'm sure that other people have done it a lot more, so that's why it's easiest so just start off with the smallest one and then attack it from smallest to largest. And normally, on average, my credit card payment on minimum was supposed to be 50, for the Best Buy one it was supposed to be 100, and the card payment was 150, and I don't know why I can't write a freaking five today. If we start off by taking off $50 off the credit card, that leaves us at $250, $100 of 1,000 equals $900, and then we have 150 off of 1500 which leaves us at 50, God, I, I can write today. 1500 minus 150 is equal to 1350. Therefore, if we add this up right here, this is going to equal $300. And 1000 minus 300 is equal to $700. And that means we have $700 left over to pay this remaining debt. So we're gonna go ahead and say this was the first month that I started using this technique, which means that I attacked the $250 first, which leaves me at $450 if I'm not mistaken. And then that means I have $450 left over to pay $900 off. So $900 minus $450, I think leaves me at $350. That's so off. $900 minus $450, I think leaves me at 450, which basically means that this remaining balance ends up being 450 and for the second month, this is already paid off. 
So now we're gonna go ahead and just update this board. So now for our second month, which I'm gonna go ahead and put a two there, our monthly payment in total is $250, which then brings this down initially to $350, and then it brings this one down to $1,200. Which then if we do 1,000 minus 250, it leaves us with $750 to pay off the rest of this debt. And with that remaining amount, we can attack the Best Buy credit card, which is 750 minus 350, which leaves us at $400. Which that then leaves the Best Buy credit card paid off, and then we use the remaining of the $400 to attack the car loan, which 1200 minus 400 equals $800. And if we go ahead and update the board and make this our third month, we have an $800 balance left on our car loan and we have a $150 car payment. But in reality, we don't even have to worry about the car payment because if we have $1,000 left over and our only debt is the car loan, you subtract that, you're actually in the positive $200 because you've attacked all your debt and now you have $200 extra in the third month, which means you paid off your credit cards and your car loan within three months. And that's pretty good and fast if you ask me because you paid off all your debt besides your student loan within less than a year. Most people hold their debt for their entire life. And like I told you guys earlier, I would be showing you guys my current debt situation and the reason that I'm in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually throw a picture up right here and show you guys exactly how much I'm in debt. But I will explain exactly why I'm so in debt. So first of all, I have auto loans, which is equal to $31,000. But that's actually two loans in total because I have my car loan and I have my girlfriend's car loan. And you're probably asking, why are you in debt? You're over here telling us not to be in debt. And this is actually a huge mistake I made because I was desperate and I screwed up. My car had recently broken down. I went immediately down to South Florida and bought me a whole new car that was nice, comfortable and all this. And yes, I screwed up in this aspect. However, I learned from my mistakes and I'm actually not even beating myself over the head for it because I actually really do love my car and it gets me from A to B and with very rarely any problems compared to my last car that was old, it was breaking down like every single month. So it was actually a decent investment. But anyways, let's get back to the point of this video, which is the fact that I have a credit card debt. Don't even worry about that. That's supposed to be returned to my account and that's not even supposed to be there. On my student loans, like I said, I still have a $7,500 student loan, which like I stated earlier, I can pay it off when I graduate. As you guys may know, I am still Still studying in college and I still have a year and a half left but we're gonna go ahead and write these debts down anyways I'm gonna explain to you guys exactly why I have them and how I'm gonna attack them so I have my student loan which I'm just gonna go ahead and write loan for it which is equal to $7,500 I'm just gonna go ahead and approximate this because just getting into the nitty-gritty exact numbers becomes a little difficult but you guys are gonna uh, at least understand the gist of it and my auto loan I'm not gonna write the entire amount because the whole thing isn't mine only $1,700 of it is mine the rest is my girlfriend so don't yell me for that go ahead and yell at her because i had to co-sign for her so the first thing is my student loan obviously right now at this current moment i don't have to worry about this so i don't i'm not gonna even bother with that i do actually pay 300 dollars let's say it's actually 315 but we're gonna go ahead and say 300 dollars a monthly payment for my car so the reason i still have this seventeen thousand dollar balance is because obviously i made a mistake like i stated earlier but the reason i'm not paying it off all at once is because I won't have that money to actually be able to invest in other things. So while I'm still paying $300 a month, I will still have all this money in my bank account that I can use to invest into my projects and into my businesses. However, if I were to pay it all off, then I would be out of that money. And there is cases where I need that amount of money, for example, to buy a lot of shoes, to hold onto them, and then to reinvest after I resell them for a profit because that is one of the things that I do. So what I'm losing by making these monthly payments is that I'm not saving the $2,000 that I potentially can I don't know why I said potentially like that, but I'm actually spending $2,000 more than I need to because the principal is really only 15,000 and then the interest is another $2,000. But I really don't care because I rather spend $2,000 more in the long run and have a lot of money right now that I need versus spend it all and not have that money at this moment and pretty much be out of $17,000 or it'd be 15,000 in this case. So after paying off all your debt, which as you guys can see, I did it in three months and in the third month, I even had money left over. If you keep yourself out of debt, then you're actually gonna have money left over every single month. And in my case, it was $1,000 more every month, which then you might be wondering, what can I do with this money? You can either save it, you can keep it in your bank account, or you can invest it. And that is what I highly recommend you do, which is what I just said is the reason for me not paying off my entire auto loan, which I will get into in the next video. So if you guys wanna be notified 
when that video drops. Go ahead and subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and also like this video if you guys did enjoy or if I brought you any value. And go ahead and dislike it if you like as well, but let me know the reason why so I can make these videos better for you guys in the future. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.